Boston Bruins are struggling right now. They have lost many games where they have given up three plus goals and the result of this 8-9-3 and three start is firing 2023 Jack Adams winner Jim Montgomery. Today we will break down why the Bruins are struggling and predict if firing Montgomery will help or will it backfire. Jim Montgomery officially fired by the Boston Bruins replaced by interim head coach Joe Sacco, not Sackick. Yeah. Joe Sacco, just to make that clear for everybody watching. Well, it shouldn't um, be Sackick. <laughs> um, fun fact: all three finalists for the tw- what not the year Jim Montgomery won the Nor- uh, the Jack Adams are all now fired. He uh, he was the winner. Dave Hackstall and Lindy Ruff, who has now who now has a job with the Buffalo Sabers. But this Boston Bruins team overall eight nine and three and. Honestly, on paper, for guys like us sitting in Vancouver who cover three different sports, some might look, sometimes not watch these guys all the time, here and there. So on, they're fourth in the Atlantic, and they're one, uh, they're one spot out of the final playoff spot from the wild card race. So you're like, oh, they're not bad. It's kind of like how we did the Canucks video. But since we watched the Canucks, that's the exact same reaction Boston Bruins fans have, Boston Bruins media analysts have, like, hey, their record is kind of deceiving. And this is actually worse than the Canucks because the Canucks at least had a positive record. So I dug deep, looked into some numbers. I watched certain games that came on TV. Again, we're in Vancouver area, Surrey to be exact. So we're not necessarily getting Boston Bruins games on our local TV. I'm right? not going to lie. I don't want to hear Jack Edwards talks anyways. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Commentary true. games. <laughs> but, no, but just in general, though, like, this team, the story of this team is this. Last year, we thought they were going to falter after... David Krejci and Patrice Bergeron both retire. We thought last year it was going to be their down year. Instead, they're like the Pittsburgh Steelers. Rose, once again, right? Defense is insane. Offense is questionable. <laughs> right? Literally the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah. Um, this year, we're like, oh, so they upgraded in a way by adding Elias Lindholm and adding Nikita Zadorov in general, and they still have that overall culture. Looks like this might be the year where they might be faltering if the, if this continues, which is probably it's, why they're looking why for a new head coach bump, I guess, for the time it, being. It is surprising because, like, when you're looking at last year, like, okay, you got two big losses in Bergeron and Krejci, and you kind of did next to nothing to replace them. But where this year, you actually made an effort to replace them and try to get Lindholm. And honestly, it was a perfect fit. We we're all, like, all of, like, a lot of media, even us two, were like, you know, Lindholm, Boston, perfect fit. But it hasn't been the case so far. He Obviously, Lindholm, Lindholm has been struggling himself. And overall, I guess, you know, you got to give him time. New team. Like, it took time for Lindholm to adjust to Vancouver. But when it came to playoff time, he started playing like, you know, the Elias Lindholm we know. Yeah. So I feel like the same thing can happen with the Bruins. It's not like, you know, it's completely done with Lindholm and Bruins. But overall, like, this start has not been promising. On top of that, Zadorov has not been prom- promising as well. So when you're looking at the Boston Bruins, and in my opinion, the last decade and a half is probably one of the most consistent teams in the NHL. Can you agree with that or no? Yes. Yeah. The, like the one of the most. Steelers, yeah. So like, you know, they're like, at the end of the year. Consistent they, they in the mis- sense that they'll be a playoff team, but have been disappointing when they couldn't get they're the job be done outside game. of 2011, unfortunately. They're, they're always going to be a tough game. <laughs> yeah. Right. At the end of the day, like no matter when you play them, if they are missing the playoffs, if they're not missing the playoffs, there will always be a tough game. And so I just don't understand how like adding Lindholm, who kind of, his he's not a one C to make that yeah, clear. Yeah, he's not a one C, but his play type at the end of the day, fits his the play mold. style fits yeah. the identity, right? And for me, the biggest thing that I could think of right now is uh, your goaltending. At the end of the day, Swayman is the backbone. Swayman deserves his contract, but how much time did Swayman miss in the training camp and regular uh, preseason to prepare for the season is kind of hindering him right now. And now... Hindering his I'll team. get to the numbers in a sec because I'm going to bring that in. But is it a coincidence very quickly that both him and Allmark are kind of struggling for their standards? Because they were getting, they were that duo. No, not really. It's not really a coincidence. It's like at the end of the day, like people to start to start the year. Yeah, to be like people had to factor it in. It, it, yeah, like, these guys were forty. Plus, Wayman missing um a lot, all, all of training camp. Yeah, that like like yeah. that. That's probably one of the biggest reasons why because yeah. Swayman struggling. And at the end, no, we know goaltending the last couple of years have kind of been. Uh, the the Bruins' backbone at the end of the day, right? Like, I know you have Pasternak, you have Marshand, you have McAvoy, like, you have good players in front of them, but Allmark winning a Vesna, you know, Swayman being one of the goalies of the playoffs last year, like, it's clear that goaltending is one of the reasons why the Bruins have been good in the last couple of years. But it's not everything, so I'm going to give you some numbers here to react, right? This year, as of right, as of this recording on November 20th evening time, 
All right, just to make that clear, so this should be out on a Thursday, but just in case it isn't, this is as of November 20th. Um, just basic, st uh, basic stats for now before I go to the high-end analytics. Goals for per game. Their second last only person they're ahead of is Chicago at 2.4, right? Last year at goals for, um, one second, let me just pull this up. Goals for... They were mid, right? Because then, not surprising, they're still 3.21. So it's still a, ga a goal better per game. But then again, their bread and butter is defense. So let's talk about the defense. If you go to the defensive side side of things, um, they were top five in goals against last year. Yeah. This year, and after you've seen some of the goals, <laughs> after the, some of the lopsided score lines, defensively, they are 27 tied for 27th at 3.45 so that that's just, not the boston bruins you know that's a differential right so that's like, the key concern defensively like there. at the end of like you looking at it like okay last year they, they weren't the best scoring team in NHL, but like them being very solid defensively like the pittsburgh steelers i guess we'll bring it back yeah they just need to be mid offensively not really harm their defense and uh, just do enough to get one or two goals a game and your goaltending and your defense could hold it down save percentage wise they're Obviously, in the bottom half, they're tied for 22nd with the St. Louis Blues, Vancouver Canucks um, as well. But again, like the, obviously, that goaltending is some part it's, of it. But I want to I want to go back to the uh, finish up. I want to go back to the offense. Yeah, it's kind of similar to Nashville at the end of the day, right? Like yeah. At the end, UC Saros is a backbone. Yes. Right. They lost a couple of identity players. Like, I don't know, at the end of the day, like seeing Kiefer Sherwood play, I was like, how, how does Nashville let's uh, We'll go? make a Nashville video yeah. on that because I, I know, have but like, that. that's like kind, of, kind of the comparison in the West, if you could think about in the NHL. Because this is a team, Nashville, Barry Trotz is a general manager. Yeah. Like, you know, that's the, like defense, boring hockey, you know, all that stuff is going to happen in Nashville. And they did that well last year. That's why they made the playoffs. This year, they also add, they want to add more goal scoring, but it hindered their identity. And uh, at the end of the day, the number, one, the number one thing, the number one need for a team is to figure out your culture and identity. And right now, the Boston They're Bruins... They're failing their own identity. <laughs> the Boston Bruins identity... It just they're not, not meeting. They're it. not. They're not meeting their identity, and so, that, that's their biggest issue. So going back to that offense first, very quickly, shooting percentage this year again, twenty seventh, eight point nine. Now shooting percentage could be anything. It could just mean high danger, low danger. Doesn't matter what the case is. And sometimes you might be lucky. AKA the Vancouver Canucks from last year. This year you could see the bad luck on the other side where they're not getting the goals, and on top of that, injuries. I'm gonna bring up the individual players in a second here, but when you look at their chances created, they're actually in the middle, right? But they're when you look at their expected goals they should be scoring goals essentially that they're not converting right and then the same thing with the goals against like they have their um uh, it's a little tough to pull sorry this is uh, if you're looking at like yeah the chances for they're not bad like they're mid right and then on the expected goal side like hold up uh, it's hard to search this one second um ex like well uh, what i'm saying is like they ha their goals their expected goals are much higher. Picture Man United. <laughs> I guess that's the best way to put it. Yeah, right? like, they're, they're not finishing. And I think a big thing for that has to be that, like, other than David Pasternak, who's really a pro okay. who's who's really a bona fide goal scorer on this team other than David Pasternak? No one. Exactly. And the problem with that is now I'm going to bring up the players, so I'm not going to go too much to it. But essentially, um, not, not waste too much time here. But essentially, what, what I was looking through this, that's the um, issue, right? They're not converting their goals, whatever, and their defense hasn't been the greatest as well like look at the, some of these score lines uh, we'll get back to um jim Montgomery in a second i'm gonna pull up each player stat so who was your rocket richard winner for this year i wanted to do faster <laughs> who was who was our selkie finalist this year Elias Lindholm. Okay, so that's going to be an issue because when you look at David Pasternak, yes, he's leading the team in points you're going to expect that the problem is he has 17 points eight goals nine assists and 20 games it's so he's it's, leading. That's the right. That's it's correct. not superstar numbers. But for him on that type of team, you need to put up essentially more than a point a game. Like you need to be on a hundred point pace. AKA what Kucherov did last year. For this team to at least get the goals you need, especially if yeah, the defense like, is struggling. If, if, if he's not scoring, bro, like no, you can't expect anyone else to score on that team. It's but as simple as that. Essentially, like if and if you look at it, Elias Lindholm is a big ad. He only has nine points in twenty games, two goals, right? So. The point is, going back to the whole um, Jim Montgomery firing, the issue is also not just the, the players, but yes, coaching is going to be a factor in it. But the problem, what doesn't sit right with me is that like he won the uh, Jack Adams, had the record of <laughs> points, yeah. fell short in the playoffs two years in a row, don't get me wrong, but 
he's also, I guess, has the tension with the star players as well. The David Pasternak benching. The Brad Marchand yelling on the bench. Brad Marchand defended him, though. He's like, hey, it's a coach. He's holding me accountable, blah, blah, blah. I don't know how much of that he really meant when he said that or if he was just protecting the team that way. So there's already that weird tension uh, amongst the players. And then plus the other thing that came into factor is this was his last year on his contract. So firing him did not mean you're going to lose like a big financial yeah, uh, thing like that. how you committed to like, I don't know, was it Lindy Ruff or whoever signed like the big uh, big contract in the past or whoever, who replaced Lindy Ruff in Buffalo? Hey. Like at the end of the day, like coming into the season, you could expect Jim Montgomery being in the hot seat because of uh, the lack of playoff success he yes. brought. Like you can't be the, but you can't be the, what, the most points in the NHL history in a regular season and lose. Blow up three one series lead to the Florida Panthers. Plus, you just you just can't do that. And plus, like you you have losses opening the season six four, but it looked more lopsided than it was against the Florida Panthers, right? You bounce back with a couple of wins, great. You lose four nothing to Predators as Predators first win of the year, right? Um, you lose to the Stars five two and seven two. You lose to the Leafs four nothing. You lose to the Flyers, but you avenge that a week later, and then to cap it all off, you lose to the Columbus Blue Jackets five one, right? So. It, it makes sense. You're so not like, getting the best out of your team, so it makes sense. But what I don't feel right is that Don Sweeney stole the GM. Because he was he replaced Peter Shirelli, who obviously had a great success, won the Stanley Cup for the Boston Bruins. Um, obviously, <laughs> as Canucks fans, it still hurts. But he fired Claude Julien. He fired um, Bruce Cassidy. What did Bruce, Bruce, where did Bruce Cassidy end up? Vegas. Vegas what did Vegas do? Won a cup. cup, yeah. Now you let go of Jim Montgomery. Don't get me wrong. The next coach firing, especially if it's a decent team uh, that fires their coach, he's getting. I think Jim Montgomery's getting picked up instantly, right? So that doesn't feel right. On top of that, the roster last year, yes, we thought we both and some other people did think many others actually thought they're gonna have a fall off. They did not. So you you kind of double doubled down on it, which I'm like, okay, somewhat fair. But seven by seven to Elias Lindholm, six by six to. Uh, Nikita Zadorov. Now you hurt yourself in the cap. Very fat. They're not performing to what, what you think they're going to be. Maybe, again, start of the year, we'll see what happens. So how is his job not in trouble? Because now this is your third head coach in your tenure in the last decade because he came in in 2015. No cups to show for it. One Stanley Cup or two Stanley Cup final appearances. I think Chicago was 2015. 2015. Yeah, and then or I think he got hired after that. Maybe I he don't know. Hired fire. May, I don't know. Actually, then he had if if he if two he for wasn't. sure. Oh, sorry, one for sure. Maybe yeah, two. One right? against St. Louis. But again, you've been that team that can. At the end of the day, it's like how your Raptor team would always make the playoffs but not do anything. Yeah, like it. he has. That's been, what this is. He's done a good enough job to be consistent. But it's, at the end of the day, like. As a Boston original six team, you know, a lot of, it's a big market. Yeah. We all know about how Boston people love Boston their sport. Boston sports in general. Boston sports in general, like, at the end of the day, rich history. But you not winning a cup for now almost 15 years is going to start, you know, is going to start being an issue in that city so, over there. And it's not like, you know, he hasn't done a good job. He's done a great job in terms of, you know, being competitive each and every year, year in, year out. Even the years that we thought he weren't going to be competitive. But at some point, you know, with the lack of playoff success, I understand where you're coming from in terms of hot seat. I don't like at the end of the day, yeah, coaches get fired here and there, but like, it just like the them being stale in the playoffs has just been the biggest issue for me. Not not be necessarily the coaches getting fired because that has happened for like a lot of GMs. It's not even a lot of like a few GMs like have been there long. Like tenure. Negotiating through the media, the whole Jeremy Swayman situation, which Cam Neely brought up, the whole Brad Marchand's getting an extension, Elliot Friedman reports. He, Brad Marchand uh, says no. So someone's leaking shit back there, right? And like, no, not to make this too long, let's to close it out here. Um, I think if they don't make the playoffs, he's gone in the offseason. Exactly, he has yeah. to be gone. Changes need to be made. Because um, right now, they're slowly getting to the Pittsburgh mold where they don't have, outside of Pasternak and their, some of their defensive um, core. Yes, you have a good goalie, so it's still a better situation than Pittsburgh, but you don't have high end offensive or high end prospects coming in. Um, and then on top of that, you're now used up your cap on Zadorov and Lindholm. You could have maybe used that money a little bit better. You're lucky Pasternak signed like a friendly deal for his standards. 11 million is a lot of money, but with the cap going up, he thought he could have been the uh, guy in the same range as uh, Matthews and McKinnon at the minimum, right? And for me, this, this team uh, in general, I feel like they'll bounce back. I don't think Joe Sacco is going to be there long term i feel like the minute the next decent head coach gets fired which aka could be mike uh, mike sullivan could get picked up even the people that are waiting right now 
Gerard Gallant's there. Yes, he he might be a stake in that coach himself. Jay Woodcroft, right? Yeah. He, he's still available. So this might be just a temporary thing that they're trying to find. I don't know what the reports are in terms of what their search is going to be at the moment. Are they going to wait? Well, I guess they'll probably see how this run of games goes. But at the end of the day, overall disappointing. Players haven't been performing. Your superstar player isn't play- performing at a superstar level. Maybe this coach firing is what they needed and they just need a fresh yes. thing. But at the end of the day... My here's like my final thoughts on this move and the Jim Montgomery firing in general is that the Boston Bruins believe that they're a good team. Yeah. Right. And they saw what the Edmonton Oilers did last year. They fired their coach early and it did wonders for them. So they're fall in my opinion, I think they're just a good team. They see like, okay, if there's a fix that we can make right now and in their eyes it's coaching and it makes sense because it's not like Jim Montgomery had the greatest playoff success, like I mentioned before. So it 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 made sense in my eyes that, okay, no, we're believe a good team. Coaching is what we could fix right now and change right now. Let's fire this guy early. Let's see if we could go on a run. It's I think that's kind of the situation here. And on top of that, one more thing I could add to it is that the GM could try to be potentially saving his job. So maybe him firing a coach and getting in a new coach bump potentially could save his job in the offseason as well. They're but like, lucky. Those are my thoughts on They're that. lucky the Senators, the Red Wings, yeah, the lucky. Sabres, and the Canadians all have not taken that jump we thought they would do, especially the, the other three teams and maybe not the Canadians because um, the Senators are lately are struggling. So they're lucky they're still in that race. So this, yeah, to your point, they might just do the Edmonton thing because they're not even, they weren't even as bad as Edmonton. So yeah, exactly. They, so for me, yeah, I think they should figure it out. We'll see how it goes. But watching them play a little bit, Eh, it didn't look the Not greatest. Not the greatest, yeah. Jeremy Swimmins now talked his way out of <laughs> Team USA consideration, and they might add in a guy like Anthony Stolarz, who's been killing it right there. So we'll see how it overall goes. We'll keep an eye on close now that we know that there's more drama to this. I believe he's the first coach hired. He'll probably be the first coach hired either in the offseason or even during the season. We'll see how that goes. But that's pretty much it. That's our thoughts on the Boston Bruins. And comment down below, Bruins fans, if you guys are watching this, what do you guys think? Right, uh, Don Sweeney should be fired. Is either is whose fault is it? Are you going to strictly blame the goaltending? Or you, do you think the coach should have been fired? Um, do you blame the players? What do you think they should be doing in the future? Hit that subscribe button. We're on the road to a thousand. Let us know what you think down below and this and like this video for more NHL content coming up. As well as if you guys are an NFL fan and an NBA fan, hit that subscribe button and that post notification bell so you guys know when the new videos come out. Other than that, we'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Peace.